Why don't you take your Bibles and turn to John chapter 7. This is something the Lord gave me in my devotions just recently. John chapter 7. I'll, uh, I'll bring the message that I have sitting in the notebook over there next Sunday. But I think that just got to, got to thinking about this praying as, as the fellows were up here and I thought maybe this is a little bit of an answer to, uh, what we were talking about. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you so much, not only for your word, but every truth, every nuance, every fact, every bit of guidance, every bit of comfort that this Word brings. I pray that You'd help us to hear it now. And we thank You for answered prayer. In our Savior's name, we rejoice. Amen. John chapter 7, verse 45. The Pharisees... Those that had decided that they wanted to destroy Christ had sent officers, men, to go and get the King of Kings. Somehow they were going to do away with him. In verse 40, 45, we find this, Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Can I tell you something? I don't care who you go to. You can go to Ellen the Degenerate. You can go to Dr. Phil. You can go to Oprah. You can go to the Dalai Lama. You can go anywhere. You can go to the Pope. You can go to any of the Pops. Whatever they are. Never man spake like Jesus. Now, now, this this is not the point that we're going to be making, but I want you to understand something. You want wisdom? You can get it from God. Where do we go? We go to the Word of God, where those words are. Never man speak like this man. You know, if there was one thing that I could just... This is one of the things that I could just get across to people when they do what these people are getting ready to do here. Look, just just listen. Open your word. He speaks. You see, the speaking voice is still speaking. The word is complete, but the voice is still speaking. What how do I know these things are real? He's telling you now. Was God really here yesterday? Yes! And you know the sad thing is, he's here today, and there might be some that don't even know that. I, I, I'm telling you, Hector, I was sitting right where you're sitting. It was Friday afternoon. And I mean, there was a peace and a presence that came over, and God said, I'm taking over. And I thought, Lord, I want that every time we come together. But I'm not kidding. I wasn't taken physically away But it was almost like anything of me was taken out of this. God is in charge. And like Tim talked about, the word was spoken. And people responded. And it was a joy. It was a joy. By the way, for those of you men that missed this, I'm going to make up, or you ladies, I'm going to make up an MP3 CD. And I'll have them tonight. Uh... We'll just we'll just give them to you and and listen to your heart's content. There were messages in there. The brother Tozer preached, uh, and uh, brother Getch. Oh my soul! Just abs- listen. These last two days, this pulpit absolutely shouted. It was a joy. And you know why? Because never a man spake like this man. They. They weren't, he was, he came as one having authority, the Bible says, and not as the scribes. The National Council of Churches couldn't handle what Jesus was saying. So please, if I can burn this into your, into your mind, I want you to understand what the Word of God says about the God of the Word who became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Never man spake like this man. 
You want to hear some things that you will never hear from any place else? You hear Him. My sheep hear My voice, and I know them, and they follow Me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of My hand. Hey, you're not going to hear that from anyone else. Zip, zilch, nada. And they hated Him for it. So let's move on. Verse 49. But the people who knoweth not the law are cursed. I take that back. Let's start at verse 28, 48. Have any of the rulers, have any of the rulers or the Pharisees believed on him? This is them saying, you know what? You deceived? What's going on here? These are the Pharisees. Verse 49. But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. Nicodemus saith unto him, he that came to Jesus by night being one of them, Doth not, do, excuse me, doth our law judge any man before it hear him and know what he doeth? Now, now Nicodemus is trying to bring them in a little bit. Hey, you know, guys, let's do this like the word of God tells us to what was there at, at that moment. What they had, the Old Testament. He's trying to get them to see, look, let's do this right, fellas. And then, verse 52. They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. And every man went unto his own house. Now stop right there. You know, there are people that are debating Jesus all the time. And they take and they twist him. The Mormons, they make him the half-brother of Satan. The Jehovah's Witnesses, they make him as being Michael the Archangel. The Roman Catholics, they just keep crucifying him Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. My Jesus was crucified once. Went into the ground once, rose again once, and he now, after ascending on high, is sitting at the right hand of the throne of God forever. Their Jesus is not my Jesus. Not mine. Uh Uh-uh. But people are debating him all the time. People in churches just like this as well. Can Jesus really keep His promises? Can He do what He said He would do? You know, I'm having a hard time. We had guys, we had guys come up here yesterday afternoon. Said, fellas, look, those of you that are discouraged, look, I, I, people get discouraged. They get depressed, including pastors. I know, been there, done that, don't want to go back. But, you know, and, and, and fellas that are having, um, you know, financial trouble. You know, churches that are, that are, it's, it's tough. It's really hard. And you know, sometimes we just, we get our eyes off him. Hey guys, listen, you come. Anybody having a hard time? You come on up and, and, and pray. Man, were they here? Were they here? And praise God, had brother Dennis Blankenship from, uh, over there in Rancho Gordova come up and pray over them. What a joy. What a great, but, but, but the thing is, is people are debating. Can I really give my life over to the Lord and really experience life? Did he really mean what he said when he said, He that will save his life will lose it, but he that loses his life for my sake and the gospel shall save it or shall find it. Does he really mean that? Yeah, he does. But see, we're debating. There's time and time and time and time again. People come into churches where the word of God is preached. And they're just, I'm sorry, preacher, I just can't believe it. Oh, oh, don't misunderstand me. I professed him as Savior, but when it comes, when it comes to me giving my life over, hey, John chapter six, like brother Getch talked about, many went away. You ought to hear that message. Now these were people, they were disciples. And they walked away. So what's the answer? I'm going to show you the answer right now. You see, I I love the chapter and verse divisions in the Word of God, but sometimes, if we're not careful, they get in the way. And and we, we don't connect the dots properly. So we're going to go back, if we would please, to verse 53. Now watch this. And every man went unto his own house. Jesus went unto the mount 
of olives. Instead of, instead of getting together and saying, Lord, is this Messiah? Lord, is this one, is he, it, it, where is he from? Now we all know he was from Bethlehem, but they're saying, no, Galilee, Galilee, Galilee. We know, but they weren't willing to stop and to wait. Every man went to his house. Meanwhile, Jesus, God's Son, come in the flesh, he goes to his prayer closet. He prays. What happens? Verse 2. And early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. Why did he pray? Hey, I tell you what, I'm exhausted. I am mentally and spiritually and physically exhausted. So is Tim. So is Megan. By the way, Tim married up. That lady, now she had a lot of help, but let me tell you something. That gal was a freight train the last couple of days, and you're just like, whoosh, you know, praise God. For all the ladies, really, that helped out. And Tim, you've got, we're, we're going to buy Tim a dictionary. And we're going to make sure that in dictionary, continental breakfast is in there so he'll know what the definition of a continental breakfast is. Because more eggs than you can handle, you know, and, and all the donuts and all the, all the sausage and all that. I, I, I keep talking, the voice up there is going to ditch out on us, so I got to be careful. It says he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had sat her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. Jesus is having to deal with these people, his enemies. He was tired. You know how he spent his time? Praying. He came back and he's prepared. Not because he debated with people about himself, but he prayed. He went to the Lord. He went to his Father. And he was able to do what some of us, a lot of us, probably wouldn't have done. We've been in the general area there on the Temple Mount where Christ stooped down and he began to write. The Bible says that he stooped down after he'd been challenged, Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? So he stooped down, verse 7. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. They which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. The point is this. They debated, and they just went home. Jesus prayed. He went to his mount. He went to his prayer closet, and he prayed. Can, can, can I ask you to do this? I, I ask you to go to the Lord and say, you know what, Lord, I, I've heard some things this morning. Is it really true? Tim's right, and it's not because of us. You've got to understand this. There were 20 churches in this, represented men, 120 men, whose lives were challenged, some changed, rejoicing in the Lord, and they're going out here saying, I can't wait till next year. It's this building, 3501 Q Street. That's a responsibility. You know, it's one that we can handle, not in our own strength. But instead of debating it and talking about it, we need to take it to the prayer closet. Lord, can you use me? You've been used. Now be prepared to be used more. How do I do it, Lord? I get tired. Take it to the prayer closet. 
Because the next day there's going to be people that are going to be challenging you. You really believe what you, you really believe all that stuff. Yes. Lord, I don't know how I'm going to answer. Jesus prayed. We know that the Holy Spirit was with him. I know he's God come in the flesh. But the fact of the matter is, he said, greater, the, the, greater things than I do, you're going to do. We have the same Spirit. We can do this. Not by our power and not for our glory, but for His. Can I ask you something? You, you hear me say this. God was here. Can I ask you this? Now, now you look at me. I, I know it's rough, but it hadn't killed my wife yet. Do you want Him here today? Does every person in this room desire, yea, pine for the presence and power of God? Because that's what's going to make the difference. Every man went to his own house. Jesus went under the Mount of Olives. Other guys debated, they argued. They stood in the foyer, they stood here, they went out and said, yeah, you know, well, I don't know, yeah, talk this, talk that. Jesus said, I'll tell you what you do. You go into the prayer closet. Lord, I am thine and all that I have. That's where the answer is, folks. That's where it's at. And I'll tell you what, you go back to chapter 6, and you read at the end how there were many that walked away from him, and you look at that and you think, oh boy, that's sad. But you know that happens today? That happens today. Don't like to see it happen. Don't want it to happen. Why? Because he's God come in the flesh, and no man spake, never man spake like this man. But it's going to happen because... Instead of going into the prayer closet, there are going to be those that are just content to debate and go back and forth and say, you know what, I just don't know. You know, the preacher, you know, talking about, or, you know, just, you know, giving my life. I'd rather have my own life. You fly with that, but I'll stick with what my Bible says. Every man went to his own house. Jesus went under the Mount of Olives. The one who spake like no other man on earth. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're coming into our prayer closet as a local church. Lord, as a body of believers, we're here. And oh, how we rejoice in You. I can imagine, Lord, that there are people here that have debated Your Word, maybe even just in their hearts, about giving their lives, about trusting You. Lord, it's a joy to know that we can. And because we live in a day and age when our faith is going to be challenged, when there will be those that stand face to face with us and dare call us liars, dare call us troublemakers, Lord, we need to understand that we need to do what You did. Leave those that debated and go to the Mount of Olives. Go to the prayer closet. Come to You. I pray, God, that You would draw us to Yourself. This is a wonderful, this is a wonderful place to, place to preach, but it's even a better place to pray.